Hey everyone, in today's video I want to show you how to deploy your Flask app on your own server. So in this video I'll be using a virtual server from a cloud provider or whatever they call themselves. I'm using Linode, but something like DigitalOcean or um, Amazon EC2 would work as well. Uh, this can also be done on your local machine or any remote server that you have access to for whatever reason. And I have to preface this video by saying that it's going to be pretty simple because there are a million different things that you'd have to think about when uh, having your own server. It's not as easy as Heroku and Python anywhere where you basically just have to worry about the app. Uh, with your own server, you have to worry about installing the applications, maintaining them. Um, you have to worry about performance issues and you have to worry about security issues. So I'm not really going to cover any of that today. I just want to do the basic case so you can see how you could have a Flask app on a remote server that uh, doesn't have anything on it yet. Uh, it's just like a blank server and you have to install everything. So I will go through the process. Uh, like I said, I'm using Linode. Um, this allows you to deploy Linux distributions of any type that you want. So let me go ahead and do that now. I'm going to use Ubuntu and let's give this a password. And it's creating the the uh, distribution. So let me just uh, run You know what? I forgot the command. It's I, I logged into this IP earlier, but since it's a new server, my SSH is going to complain, but I'll deal with that in a second. So let me start the server. Let me boot it up and just wait for that to boot. So on this server, I will install a few things. I'm going to install um, pip so I can download Python modules. I'm going to install Nginx so I can have a web server that sits between the internet and uh, Gunicorn, which is the application server that I'm going to use for the Flask app. So two servers are going to be used and then uh, Flask. So the server is up. Uh, let me SSH into it. So root at 4579153217. It's complaining because I've logged into this IP before, but now this is a different server. So let me just remove the existing key. Um, okay, so now I should be able to log in. Yes. And then. I'm in. So now I'm logged into the server that I just created. So now let me go through the process of getting everything ready so I could um, run this Flask app. So the first thing I should say is normally when you first log into a server, you'd create a new user account that you would use, and then you use that account and use sudo to do any of the um, uh, administrator things but in this case I'm not going to do that I'm just going to leave it as root because I don't want to focus on the the Unix space part I just want to show you how to deploy the flask app so I'm going to stay root but in practice I wouldn't recommend that you do this so let me clear this out the first thing I need to do is update the repository so sudo app git update and if you chose a different distribution that wasn't Debian based uh, I don't know exactly how their package manager works. I'm only familiar with Debian and Ubuntu, which has apt git, which is pretty easy to use. That's why I like it. So after update, I need to install a couple of things. I need to install pip and nginx. Uh, Python is already installed by default. It's 2.7, but for my case, that's good enough. So pip and nginx. Yes, I want to continue. Nice thing about having a remote server is I don't have to worry about speed. It's usually much, much faster than my uh, local computer. I have a very slow computer by choice. 
but uh, sometimes it gets annoying when working on my local machine. So I've installed those two things, Nginx and Python pip. So now let's uh, configure Nginx. Nginx is going to act as a proxy server. So what this means is it's going to sit between my application server, which is Gunicorn, and the internet. So a request comes into my site. It will first go to Nginx, and then Nginx will redirect that request to where I want it to go, which in this case is Gunicorn. Uh, Gunicorn will then pass that to the Flask app. The Flask app will do something, return a response to Gunicorn. Gunicorn will return that response to Nginx, and then Nginx will send that back out to whichever person initiated the request. So uh, there's a a little bit of configuration that I have to do to set up Nginx as a proxy server. Uh, so the first thing I need to do is actually start Nginx. So sudo, I really don't need sudo because I'm root, but it's just a habit. So uh, et cetera, and it d Nginx and then start. So that should have started the Nginx server. And then I want to remove the existing configuration, uh, the default one. That is just uh, not exactly what I need. So it's in sites enabled. So Nginx sites enabled and it's called default. So I'm removing that sudo rm remove. And then I'm going to create a new file and sites available. So Nginx sites available. And I'll call this flask settings. And then I need to create a symbolic link between the file that I just created, Flask Settings, and I'm just going to create a um, an equivalent one in uh, the Sites Enabled directory, which basically means that not only is this one of the possible configurations, it is an active configuration. So Sites Available, Flask Settings, and then same thing, but Sites Enabled. Flask settings. And then finally, I just need to edit that file. So, vi, etc., nginx, sites, enabled Flask settings. And then in this file, uh, this is Nginx syntax. So you have a server block, and then inside the server block, you have a location. And this location is going to be where I want, um, or where the requests are coming from. So index requests are going to uh, hit this location and anything that's under it. So. Since it's a proxy server, it's going to be proxy pass, which means it's going to pass all requests to a certain server. In this case, the server is on the local machine, uh, the local server, or the remote server. Uh, but since I'm on the server, it's um, 127.0.01 because I'm writing this from the perspective of the remote server. So Gunicorn is going to be on port 8000. And then need to set the header I really don't need to do this but let's do it anyway so it's just passing the same host uh, for it and it's gonna set the IP to whatever the ID of the person who requested the um, URL instead of the IP of the proxy server so that's all the setup I need for nginx it's pretty simple I said it's just passing our requests to Gunicorn, which will be on port 8000. So now that that's done, I need to restart Nginx and restart. Okay, everything should be fine. So let me clear that out. Now, the next thing I want to do is set up the Python part. So the first thing I want to do is install virtual env. And that was fast. And now let me activate it. Well, actually, now let me my Flask app. So I'm going to put my Flask app in this directory. And then I'll create a virtual environment in this directory. So this should take a moment. OK, that's done already. 
So now let me activate it. So source env bin activate. Okay, I'm in the virtual environment now. So let me install Flask and Gunicorn. So Flask and Gunicorn. Now, like I said, Gunicorn is going to be the server that will call Flask and then forward all the responses to Nginx. So it looks like it installed both um, Gunicorn and Flask. So let me create a basic Flask app. I'll call this hello. It's gonna be very simple. So from Flask import Flask app name. And then I'll have just a single route on the index because I'm not making an action app like actual application here. Okay, so it should say hello there. Oh, and um, I don't have to do the if name main part because I won't be calling this from Python directly. Gunicorn is going to be using it. So Gunicorn knows to look for app and from there it can actually run the application. So now that Flask is installed and Gunicorn is installed and I have the source file, I should be able to run the server now. So let's see if this works. Uh, I'm going to call Gunicorn with no settings. There are a bunch of different flags that you can use, but for this basic case, I'll just use Gunicorn with nothing. And then the name of the module is hello, and the name of the app is app. So if I run this, uh, it should tell me that the worker process has started and the server is up. All right, so it started Gunicorn. It's saying it's listening on the local host at port 8000, which is exactly what I set up in Nginx. So now when I go to this IP address, I don't have a domain, but when I go to the IP address that I have here, 4579-153-217, um, it's going to go to Nginx first, and then Nginx is going to send the requests over to Gunicorn, which will then run my Flask app. So let me copy this and put it in my address bar. And we see hello there um, as a result. So this doesn't tell you all the requests that come in, but still. Uh, the server has Nginx on it and Gunicorn working together to serve up the uh, result here. And of course, if I made this Flask app more complicated, it will still work because Nginx is there. But like I said, there are tons of things that you can do when you are administering your own server. So I'd recommend when you're just starting out, like you have a new app, to use something like Heroku or Python Anywhere, it's so much easier to get a to set up. And there's so much less that you have to worry about. Going this route of having your own server is unnecessary, in my opinion, until you get really big. And once you get to that point, you won't need my videos anymore. You would be able to uh, figure things out on your own. So that's all I wanted to cover in this video. Uh, I know that was a very simple process, but I just want to show you how it was done. But like I said, I would actually recommend that you do it in practice. But um, it's something that you can play around with if you want to learn more about server admin. It can be a good starter in running your own server. And who knows, maybe you can get a server set up that's uh, better to use than Heroku. And then as a result, it'd be cheaper too because you're doing everything on your own. So if you have any questions about this video, please leave a comment down below. Um, if you like this video, give me a thumbs up, please. And if you like my channel, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video. I will talk to you next time.